ジェグルで。How is the state of the mind now? What is this state called? It is the state of no mind. Yeah? When there are no thoughts, when your mind is not running out into this world, when you are within, yeah? you are calm, you are quiet. This is called the state of no mind. Yeah. You crave for this, and then this will just shut up for some time, isn't it? Yeah. And that experience only happens in long career. It is this, the taste of this no mind, that pulls you to long career again and again and again. Have you noticed? Why do you come to Long Cave? Did you ever think? What is the tendency of this mind? Let's understand what is the mind. What is the mind? Full of thoughts. Full of thoughts or thoughts? <laughs> thoughts. Mind equals to thought. No mind equals to? No thought. <coughs> Am I the mind? No. Really? Sure? Yes. Partially. Partially? So I'm half mind and half not mind? I am not the mind. I have a mind. I have a bottle. I have a glass. I have a white dress. I don't say I am a dress. I don't say I am a bottle. Yeah? Understand this. I have a mind. I am not the mind. I never say I mind. Do you say I mind? No. I is separate and my mind is separate. Are you understanding this? Yeah? Simple English I'm saying. My mind. My mind means it is separate. It belongs to me, but it is separate than I. Are you getting the distinction? I have a mind. Yeah. Similarly, do you say I body? What do you say? I have a body. Mm, my body. I have a body. Are you getting it? You are not this body. You are not the mind. You have a body. You have a mind. Are you getting it? So who's this I then who's saying I have a body and I have a mind? Ah, the self. That is the one that says I. Yeah. Then what is ego? Ego also says I, no? <coughs> what is the ego? No. Come on, all intelligent people sitting here. No. What PhDs and what master's degrees you guys have, no? It's another <laughs> aspect of the mind. That is, again, it is a, a, a sense of a thought or something that you feel. It's connected to the mind, not to the self. Very beautiful. False sense of self is equal to ego. Yeah, It's a false sense. I am this. I am that. I am better than you. Yes? Wherever I say I in comparison to another, it is a false sense of identity. A false sense of self. That is the ego. Yeah, very simple. Yeah, very simple to see. The moment I distinguish myself and say, I am better than you, oh, you are rubbish. I am ego. 
when I am in the self, I see, oh, the same self is permeating everywhere. Yeah? I do not see a distinction. Then I am in the self, in the divine, in whatever, whatever you like to call it. Some people call it Atma, some people call it Divine, God, Consciousness, Supreme Energy or I. Clear? These are clear? What is the mind? What is the ego? Yeah? Now tell me, what is the intellect? So what does mind do? She said process is information. You could hear? What does the mind do? Right now you are listening to me. Who is listening? My mind. Mind listens. <coughs> Who's processing what I am saying? The intellect. The intellect. You get it? Perception of information or data equals to mind. Yeah? Processing of this data, judging, making concepts out of it, should, should not, right, wrong, yes, no, I like, I dislike. All this is done by intellect. intellect. Simple. Am I the intellect? No. I have an intellect. intellect. So these are all my tools. Yeah? But what has happened to me? Do I remember them as tools? I think I am the everything. Ah, I think I am the mind. The mind goes out, sees a very beautiful girl or a very handsome boy, lost in that. Yeah? Lost in possessing him or her, wanting, no, no, you should talk to me. No, you be only with me. This is all the tendency of the mind, <coughs> getting lost in that external attraction. Yeah? I have lost my identity. I lose myself, I go with the mind and get lost in the external. So how does this mind go out? <coughs> senses. Beautiful. Five senses. Through the five senses, the mind gets lost outside. What are the five senses? Smell, taste, touch. Sight. Sense of smell, sense of taste, sense of touch, sense of sight and? Senses like hearing, sound. Sound. Yeah. I am lost outside through these five senses. How? I give you an example of sense of sight. Beautiful woman or man. Tell me sense of taste. Good food. Yeah. Your body says, I have put on extra fat. No more fat for me. Thank you. Yeah. But the mind says, little more, extra cheese. Are you seeing this? I get lost in the craving, the taste, the sense of taste. I'm lost outside. Yeah. I lose control. Yeah. Sense of sound, give me an example. Music. music. Hearing music. And this is very simple thing, does not harm me so much. What harms me more? The words. Ah. Oh, he should approve of what I do. She should like me. He should say good things about me. Oh, she criticized me. It's the end of the world. <laughs> Are you seeing this? I am lost in the sense of sound. My mind has gone out. And I got lost with it. So what is the problem? I. Yes. Sorry. When I start identifying with the five senses, that is the problem. Are you getting it? The moment I start identifying with, he said this and she said this, oh, she said I'm a bad person. Finished. Now I put a label, new label, bad person. Oh, he said that I am ugly. Oh, ugly person. Big label another. You keep collecting like this labels from other people. Have you noticed? Big garbage can you have? It's garbage. It does not mean anything. 
and you're carrying that garbage on your back, walking. Yeah. But even the I, that I think I am everything, is not the I, right? It's not the self, right? It is. Purusha is nothing but the Brahman consciousness. Huh? He's talking about one level higher. We will get there. Huh. Yes. You said the some time back that the mind is nothing but thoughts. And that was one statement. One statement or whatever. The second thing we talked about ego and intellect. Okay. I am unable to understand, like to me, can I say, okay, we talked about the uh, intellect as a processing stuff, okay, that tells you what is good, what is bad, and all that. Stuff. Can I attribute intellect as a thought process? Also, ego. Everything is coming from our mind. I mean, the sense of thoughts itself. Is, isn't ego a thought also? It has started from the mind. Culprit is the mind. Okay? From the mind, intellect can start processing good things or bad things. But where is the origin? The mind. The thought came from the mind. Yeah. The ego can identify with a particular thought and say, I am this or I am not this. But where is the origination? Okay. From the mind. Mm -hmm. Understand this. These are three separate faculties. Even in your own computer, you have a CPU, you have a ROM, where you, the memory is stored. You have different units even within a computer, right? Just like that. That is how it is designed. I was visualizing in a way like the brain, you have a small piece of brain. In compartmentalizing that, okay, this is uh, the thought <laughs> generating process, this is a CPU. Am I stuck somewhere? Am I stuck it's somewhere? okay. It doesn't matter however you understand it. Yeah? We are all intellectuals. We have different ways of processing the same information. As long as you understand it, that I am not the mind. I have a mind. It is a tool. And let me just use that like a tool. Let me not become a slave to the tool. Are you understanding becoming a slave? Yeah, we become slaves to the mind. How? Ah, the mind says, oh, I want to watch this episode. It's 11.30 in the night. You know, next morning, early morning, I have to get up at 7. Yeah, I should go to bed now. Body says sleep. Yeah, it's tired. But the mind says half an hour more. Half an hour more. Oh, so, so beautiful she's looking. What is this? Yeah, the tool has become the master. Are you seeing this? I do not have a say over this tool called mind. Are you seeing it? Mind just got in attracted to a very beautiful scenery, whatever in that episode. Intellect says, good, good. You know, very beautiful she is looking. Intellect processed the data. Yeah? Ego said, oh, I should know this. Whatever, I should see this for half an hour. Yeah? Sleep, it's okay if I sleep half an hour late. Are you seeing this? Yeah? Origination is mind. Now we talked about the discipline of body or discipline of mind that you talked about. Okay, you gave an example and you want to see some episode. Isn't spiritual pursuit that you are doing, the craving, hmm. isn't going an extra mile, isn't it uh, going against the rule of uh, the principles of what we are talking about? No. In fact, it's following the discipline to the T. If I do discipline of body, I listen to my body. My body says, now I am hungry, now I should eat. Yeah? This is good for the body. What, what do I eat? What do I eat? What the tongue likes. Are you seeing it? Mm -hmm. I don't eat what my body says is good for me. My body says fresh green vegetables. My tongue says no oily, fatty, sugary. My body says, no, I am putting out more fat. Are you getting it? Discipline of the body. Listening to the body. Not the sense of taste. Yeah? So can we say, by controlling the senses, you are basically shutting off the tools so that the mind will not utilize the tools? No, you are not shutting it off. You are in fact using the tool for what it was supposed to be used for. A hammer is used to just put a nail in and keep it back. The hammer does not have to keep on going on all day. 
That's what your hammer is doing. The drill machine is on all day. Unnecessary thoughts. Yuck, 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 yuck. Isn't this going on right now also? You are listening to me, but here your chitter chatter is on. Your drill machine, your hammer is on. Unnecessarily. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Being able to use this tool when I want. The tool is not my master. I am the master of the tool. But I don't want to use the tool ego at all. Huh. Fantastic. It was given for a particular reason. For self-respect. So you don't even, you know, go to another extreme okay. of where okay. you don't even have self-respect. Use it for that. So you are saying even e ego is to, can be used at a certain level. Absolutely. So that it doesn't go beyond your limit so that your senses won't go beyond. Correct. Yeah, like a pinch of salt. Pinch of salt in food makes it tasty. Lots of salt in the food and you won't eat it. That's how you should use your ego. Any tool. Even the mind. If your mind is going on chitter chatter, chitter chatter right now, it's okay. on short circuit. The drill is not functioning well. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I recognize this is the tendency of my mind. Discipline of the body, discipline of mind, and discipline of speech. speech. Do we have this discipline? We just go on. All the time. Rubbish we are talking. Utter rubbish. Write down what you what you're talking. You know? In the whole day. And then you read it at the end of the day. You laugh at it and say more than 60% of the stuff was utter rubbish. I was just making conversation. For no reason was I saying this. Discipline of speech. Speaking only when required. Yeah. Speaking if somebody has asked me for something. I don't go and you know you should do this and you should do this. That person is not in listening to you. In his mind he is thinking when will I run away from here. Yeah. And then you say people don't respect me. I talk such nice things. I am such a nice person. People don't respect me. Recognize, recognize, look within, what is it? Three how disciplines. To, how to strike that balance, like, how do I know if I'm going beyond my, beyond the limits of my egoistic, egoistic? Very simple, take one step back. Right now, I am observing exactly how this body is sitting, how this hand is moving. Are you aware of how your body is now you became aware that I told you. Are you aware of your breath? Yes. Now you became aware of your breath. See? We are not aware of the body. We are not aware of the breath. Are you aware of your own mind? What is your mind talking? Chitta chatter? What is it saying right now? See? You are not even aware. Like that only constantly again and again. Bringing myself to the moment, being aware of what I am doing, what I am saying, yeah, what I am thinking and even deeper, what I am feeling inside. Yes? What happens to us at the feeling level? When we are unaware of our own feelings, what happens? Comes out in other ways. Ah, I'm not even aware right now that anger is coming up. Yeah, what happens to me? I start lashing out at people, saying this, saying that, behaving nasty. After 10, 15, 20 minutes, when that anger, you know, that fire cools off, then I realize, oh, I should have not done this. This I should have not said. Oh, hasn't it happened? Yeah, why? Because we are not aware of our own selves. We are not aware of those emotions happening inside. Yeah? And there is a state possible where you can take yourself one step behind. This is called witnessing your own mind. Witnessing your own emotions. You understand witness? Mm -hmm. What is a witness? 
observing like a camera like observing like a camera beautiful yeah like a camera observes does a camera jump in and say i like this no no i don't like this how do you watch a match a football match are you an, a witness you get involved yes what is a witness one who just observes stands there and observes whatever is happening like a referee hmm? like a referee of the match like a referee of the match not getting involved not getting involved emotionally either yeah take one step back and observe this match there is a big match going on inside you i like this i don't like this she's right no she's wrong oh this is the way no no this is not the way this should be this should not be he said this she said this are you noticing dwandva this is called conflict all the time there is conflict in the mind yeah even when you have to go to pick up something to eat there is conflict sandwich pizza yeah and you have to pick up a sweatshirt in the morning to wear red blue observe this happening just take one step back and observe what is happening in the mind what is happening in the body what is happening at the emotional level can you observe now can you see yourself now are you watching your mind where is the mind is it in the past is it in the future Present. How many are in the past? It's okay. Be honest. How many in the future? How many just don't know? Could not watch the mind. Be present here. What happens in the present? why he could not watch the mind in the present because the mind does not exist in the present in this present moment this present moment is this it's gone now it's this it's gone now it's this it's gone now are you seeing what i'm saying mm -hmm. the present moment is a fraction of a second it's just there and it's gone the mind does not exist here when you are 100% here yeah you are in the state of no mind is seeing this yeah this very rarely <coughs> happens yeah rarely happens when we are awake Yeah, till the time I am standing with a big stick on your head, you will be in the present. Yeah, the moment I let you go, you walk out, and then you see how your mind goes back to the past or the future, and you are lost, right? <coughs> observe this. Observe this. Yeah, take one step back and observe all the time. Yeah, I have a mind. This is the drama of the mind. Yes, I have emotions. These emotions are going up and down, up and down. Yeah, this observing is called being a sakshi. Sakshi. <coughs> What is sakshi? Witness. Witness. Yeah, being a witness. So that's your homework. I don't know when I'll meet you next time. Yeah, but I'll definitely ask you. I'm going to remember. <laughs> so practice being a sakshi again and again and again coming to the present moment being a no mind yes now let's see what happens during the kriya why do you like the kriya so much now you understood so much about the mind and no mind now you tell me why do you like the kriya so much yes, no mind and kriya Ah, and how does the no mind happen? In the, we are in the present moment. 
Yeah, how? What is the process? Intellectually Breathing. analyze it. Breathing. Just this action. Yeah. It brings you. Beautiful. So, that means there is a way to deal with the thought activity. This is thought activity. Yes? I like this, I don't like this, 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 this. It's continuous. Thoughts are continuous. They don't stop. It's like a chain. Agreed? Yeah? What happens in Kriya? For a moment, even if it is for a fraction of a second, when you are doing the fast cycles, what happens to this thought activity? It breaks. The pattern breaks. Have you noticed? You are thinking about something. Yeah, She said this. She said this. And then she said this. She should have not said this. And <laughs> have you noticed? Yes. The moment you go to fast, that thought breaks. Yes? This is what happens. You come to no mind. Yeah? For some time you stay here. Again you go back. Your mind has got so used to doing Kriya now for so many years. You are very chalu. Yeah? Very cunning you become. Your mind goes back up. And again it starts. Yeah? Again you come to the next round of fast cycles. Again this comes. Are you seeing this? Mm -hmm. Yeah? And this happens repeatedly. And sometimes at the end the mind forgets to go back up. That's when you really experience deep meditation. Have you noticed? Of course, mm -hmm. at the end when Guruji tells you, and then you suddenly come back. How many times have you noticed that when you were lying down, you were some completely gone? You were not there. How many of you have experienced? Yeah? So you know what I'm talking about. You have experienced this. This is called no mind. Do you get it? And this is your mind activity. No mind? No. Yes, I know. But in sleep there cannot be a state of no mind. In sleep there are dreams. And dreams is nothing but the mind. Yes, in sleep you think in the night you were resting? No. No, not even in that. Yeah, not even in that. Yes, your mind is continuously active. Continuously. Yeah, if the whole day you wanted to eat ice cream and you just could not get out of class, you just could not get out of work and you just could not get that ice cream. Definitely in the night in your dream you are having your butterscotch ice cream. <laughs> Have you noticed? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Five types of dreams, what are they? Quickly, he doesn't know. Bring him up to speed. First? Last. Exam hone wala tum log ka pata hai no? Ah. The future. Mm -hmm. All my cravings and Mixed. aversions, mm -hmm. everything that I've had is all of the past. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Before this moment, everything is past. Mm -hmm. So, my cravings and my yes. aversions and fears. Mm -hmm. Whatever I fear, I fear the boss, I fear an exam, I fear some particular person. I'm insecure about somebody, that person will come in my dream. Yeah? So, cravings, aversions and fears. You understand craving and aversion, no? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want, I want, I want is a craving. I want to be with this person. I want this food or I want this, this grade in college or I want this name and fame in office. This is craving. What is aversion? No. I don't want this person. Yeah. I don't want this situation to happen in my life. Cravings, aversions and fears. All these three is in one type of dream. All in the past, dreams of the past. Of the future, you sometimes get an intuitive dream. What is going to happen? Has it happened that you've dreamt something and next day that happened and you're like, gosh, I saw something like this in my dream last night. Yeah? 
intuitive dream. Yeah. Third type of dream? Mixture. It's a mixture. Yeah. Something energy of someone else that's come to you. Yes. Yeah. It's got to do with the place where you are sleeping. Mm. Yeah. You will experience this especially if you go to another city and stay overnight in a hotel room or something and suddenly you see that in your dream you're speaking in a language you've never heard before. Yeah? You're speaking in the African tribal language. Yeah? You've never even heard that language before. But it's got to do with the vibrations of that particular space. Yeah? The people that were there in that space. So understand that this mind catches on to other people's thoughts. We are all sitting here in this room. Yeah? We are not just breathing the same air in and out, but we are breathing each other's thoughts also. Yeah? Right now, our thoughts are going in and out, in and out. Yeah? That is why when they say when you come and sit in an environment where people are talking knowledge and meditating, you catch on to that. Why? You get the energy from them. Exactly. Just like you can get oxygen in a room, you know, full of oxygen. You can get carbon dioxide and die in a room full of carbon dioxide. Just like that. In a room where there are good thoughts. Yeah. People are speaking knowledge. That which is good for life and progress of life. Yeah. You feel good. You enter a room where people are gossiping and criticizing and saying nasty things. How do you feel there? You also start feeling uncomfortable. You also catch on to that negativity. Have you noticed? Yeah? So understand, it is very, very subtle. And it is a deep study. Yeah? And that is what is spirituality. Understanding my own mind. Understanding my own intellect. Yes? Spirituality is not just studying some stories. Yeah? It has to do completely with my mind and my own emotions. How is the pattern in the short career that we do at home every day? Similar. Okay. Similar, similar. I am just gave you an example. Of is the meditation the same pattern or? Yes, it depends on you how long you sit and meditate also. That is why they say, no, after you do short career, don't immediately get up. Sit and meditate. Right? You've been told, everybody. Yeah? Sit and meditate 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes, whatever you but, can. But in short Kriya, we don't have, we don't go that deep, right? That is why long Kriya. <laughs> yes, that is why you have to come for long Kriya. But how does the short Kriya help then? At least, I mean. Yeah, it helps. Even if I don't go very deep, even if it is not an extended, but I experience these, yeah, which keeps my mind calm. Every day I collect the stresses of anger and negativity going on at home and at work, right? <coughs> yeah. You go, go to meet somebody, that person is in an angry state, I catch on to that state. Yeah, at home some people are fighting with each other, I catch on to that. Every day dirt I'm collecting, I have to clean every day, no? Yes, that is my short clear. So can we say the more we do um, short career, the better the experience you get in long career. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you will be cleaner. If you are cleaner, your experience of no mind will be longer. Are you understanding this? Yeah, if I am dirty, I am only spending the time cleaning the dirt. Because I have not really spent time at home doing my short career to clean that dirt. But if I have been regular at home with short Kriya, in long Kriya, boof, I go deep into meditation. Yeah? The period of no mind is longer. Clear? Yeah? So never ever miss a chance to do long Kriya. Never ever do that. Yeah? It's your only taste of your own no mind. It's beautiful and that takes you away from all these things, no? these external things that you are lost in.
Did you understand the mechanics of Kriya before? Mm. How many years have you been doing, doing long Kriya, short Kriya? Four years. Fourteen years? Four. Four years. <laughs> Any question? Yeah. Huh. Not related to this topic. Uh, huh. uh, this is so we talked about karma principles and all that. Okay. I mean, I whatever that you go through it. I know we talked about three types of sanchita karma, prarabdha, and uh, agamita. Anything that is been going on right now. Is it that the reap, whatever I'm, I mean, already I might, might have sown the seeds in the past and that is what is happening. Is the nature that, which is making a person to go through it, is based on the things that has already sown or something which is going to be taken out from the future also into this year? No, no, no. It will never take out something from the future. If in a garden you mm -hmm. throw sunflower seeds and you throw mango seeds mm -hmm. and you throw groundnut seeds, Sunflower will sp sp sprout in four weeks. Yeah, groundnut will take four months. But mango is going to take its years. You cannot say the mango sprouted in four weeks. It's not possible. Mango takes years. So that means it is whatever I am paying right now is because of something that I did. I did in the past. There is no God sitting up there who has written down Lakshmi did this right so and like this wrong. I say suppose if I am going to certain certain things, say suppose uh, financially I am getting uh, something, okay. That means somewhere, sometime in my past life or wherever it is, I have to, because of that I am going through it. It doesn't matter. It's not that uh, I am being in this situation that it's happening for itself. Correct. The second thing is, uh, is it like, okay, I am in a family right now, okay, I have a lot of karma going on between my wife and my son or whoever it is, is it the same person who is going to repay it back to me or I will be, or it is through something else, some other one? No, it is the same person. So, if so I am hurting, say, Ravi today, I mean, I have been, okay, cursing him all the time, the, the next life or where, wherever it is, it is the same person, if some other entity will come back Correct. and repay. Correct. Same Purusha will take another body and come back. You have to repay. So it is not like from some other person. Uh, oh, okay. He will give you, give it back to you. Because he also has collected the same karma, no? In a karma equation, there is not just one person. There is always two. There is a give and take between the two. You gave, he took. Next lifetime, he has to give back. You have to take. And that is why I say, cut this thing of give and take. That is dropping Agami. This moment, drop it. Become like a leaf. If a leaf is just going in the direction of the wind, wind takes it north, it goes north. Wind takes it south, it goes south. It does not say, I want to do this or I don't want to do it. I like this, I don't like this. I want this, I don't want this. These things create karma. Okay. <coughs> yeah, one more. It's all, it is all, we are all going through because it's happening. I mean, I know that like, we are not, we are part of that equation that is where we are put in. Okay, it is happening. And I, re I remember you mentioned that either you willfully take it or unwillfully you want to take it. That's the only choice that you have. Correct. If I don't, if I start complaining, cribbing and being part of the situation that I am in this thing, I'm not helping in any way myself, mm. okay. Mm. So if I take it in a willful way, like saying that, okay, this is what I am and I have to go through it, I'll do the best of what I can do and go with it. Absolutely. I don't know what my question was. There is no I'm question, sure. Lakshmi. <laughs> it's clear. One Brahman. Brahman. That's the name for consciousness. Or if you want to call it God. Or you want to call it supreme energy. It's like nothingness. It's like space. Can you touch space? Can you smell it? Can you taste it? It's beyond your five senses. Can you say the space in this room is different from the space in the hallway? 
Can you separate space? Can you see spaces here and not there? Can you see spaces in me and not in him? Space is everywhere. Do you get it? Like that. Brahman is nothingness basically. Beyond this mind and intellect. It is just energy. It is everywhere. In the beginning of the creation there was just this nothingness or this energy. Whatever you want to call it. Yeah? For the sake of language they use the word Brahman. In English we call it consciousness. In the beginning there was just this consciousness. This consciousness broke into many 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 Purushas. Purusha is nothing but the I in you. It's a subtle being. Yeah? And this I then took on Prakriti. What is Prakriti? Form. Form. Body. Yeah? This is also Prakriti. This is also Prakriti. Prakriti is earth, water, fire, ether, air. Different permutations and combinations of earth, water, fire, ether, air is present in every living and non-living thing. Whether it is an insect, an animal, a mosquito, a bird, a cow, a pigeon, a fish, a human being or a non-living item. This has 99% earth. Yeah, This has maybe just 10% earth. Are you seeing it? Different proportions of these five elements is what you see all around you. That is Prakriti. So basically Brahman broke up only into two. Purusha and Prakriti. Got it? Prakriti is the five senses. The five earth, water, fire, ether, air. And these are nothing but related to your senses. That goes deeper and deeper and deeper and we can discuss that. Those who are very interested in studying all this, we are starting a new session of knowledge series. It will be on Google Hangout. This is starting on in November, every Tuesday on Google Hangout. 